We're top of the league. We're top of the league. Manchester United. We're top of the league. Well, go on, fellow waste man from the waste man mafia. This is your boy Rome. Welcome back to the channel. Make sure you drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new. Manchester United. Just, 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 just win 2-1, which means we're back, we're back, we're back on top of the league. And uh, honestly, it was a nerve-wracking game. I was watching it, and my son was there to me one time. I think I almost threw him off the bed, bro. It was rough. Um, first, let's talk about a couple points in the game. One, why does the field seem like it's so small? A lot of people keep telling me on Twitter that it's because the stadium itself is small and the... The cameras are so close to the field, it feels like the stadium is small, but geez, it just seems like the 18 yard box and the touchline is two feet away, bro. It feels so congested. The whole game just felt congested. It never feel like a normal game. Like Fulham could always cover grounds faster because they're used to a small field, and that's my theory, and I'm sticking to it, bro. It felt like they might have an RG in a one room, like no space. Ugh, it was so bad. Um, before we shout out the real champions are the real heroes of today. Um, big shout out to David De Gea and that save because cheese Loftus Cheek got me with me. Ah, that boy Loftus Cheek, man. Cheese, what a save from David De Gea. And that, that was it, a nerve wracking moment. And another nerve wracking moment was that deflection from Eric Bay. Jesus Christ. Me had it out of my chest, bro, because we didn't need these three points. Man City win. And that goal, the Man City get that offside goal. It's something else we're going to talk about later. But again, Manchester United. Top of the league, two points clear of everybody else behind me. Looking forward to the next couple of games. We have Sheffield next in the league after Sheffield and Arsenal. In between that, we have Liverpool on Sunday in the FA Cup. So, the game's coming thick and fast. And I love how Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is using the squad. And I think he's the only manager in the league in the top six right now that is utilizing the squad as best as possible. Now, I'm going to assume that Pogba won't play in the next game against Sheffield because he needs a rest. Bruno also needs a rest. We should be able to get past Sheffield without Bruno or without Pogba. Like play Van de Beek in there or something. Because at the end of the day, we need for, you know we need to get those three points. But we can't have the man them get injured or, or even lose form because of being played too much. The games are coming thick and fast. And yes, Pogba can rest over the weekend. So I guess he can definitely come back for Sheffield. Because if he rests over the weekend against Liverpool, then he'll be back. So I'm looking forward to that. Also, shout out to Cavani. Well taking goal. It was there at the right spot. And that's the kind of striker Cavani is yeah he's the kind of striker to be there in and around the box taking up the scraps which is definitely what Marshall is not Marshall is that get the ball to feet running at players type of striker or playing one or two sharp passes at the edge of the box and then moving and so I am happy that we have that type of striker in Cavani in our team and I'm also happy that we have the Marshall type of striker in our team because different strokes for different folks I understand we use Marshall in the games as a striker in those games that he'll be effective and also remember Cavani is not 24 bruv man is I remember 33 and maybe even older which means that he's not going to be able to play 34 games a season so on days uh, we don't have a Cavani available due to injury I need our time for him to rest Marshall can play up front and I love how Oligon and Socha is using his team I really want I'm not really a fan of Greenwood playing up front just yet because he's still learning his trade and they have him playing on the right hand so much that even the, the time that he got a chance to play up front, he was drifting to the right every time just to get a hold of the ball. I'm certain, I'm hoping Greenwood would come good in the striker position. Granted, that's where he played when he was in the under-18s and the under-23s. Um, I'm comfortable and okay with Martial and, and Cavani right now. They seem to be taking up the mantle. Martial is not scoring as much as he should, especially in the Prem. But again, you know, he, he's definitely going to come good. You... Don't forget this man scored 23 goals last season. He was a top scorer last season in the Prem as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing Marshall get back some farm. And I think I know what the problem is with Anthony Marshall. You know? Marshall Anthony Marshall need to get rid of his agent, bro. Get rid of your agent so you can find someone who can actually get you a boot deal and stop wearing the blackout black boots, bro. Because your confidence is low. Obviously, nobody knows why you be the ambassador so you can't even score a goal. We need to forget that you leave Nike 
from last season, late last season, this man left Nike and nobody not pick him up yet. You have to ask yourself the question, why is it that no one is picking up Anthony Marshall and giving him a boot deal? What, so, what kind of negotiations are you guys going through that you man cannot get a boot deal? Right now, he's the biggest, the, the only high profile footballer playing for Manchester United with a following around the world of millions of people and nobody no want to sign you up, bruv. What is wrong with your negotiating skills from your agent? And I think that's the curse, that's the judge right now. Anthony Martial doesn't have a boot deal, so he can't score. The moment the man gets a boot deal, Puma, sign him up. You sign up everybody. Umbro, still alive, sign him up. Tell him call me. Me have links at, at Under Armour. Sign him up. The man need to get a boot deal. Other than that, he's not going to score. And we need him back on the charts, bro. Stressing me out. But let's focus on a few more topics or a few more points that you know people are running into especially on social media one of those is that manchester united right now is 17 games unbeaten away in the premier league write that down somewhere i'll wait write it down and put it on a plaque put it above your bed 17 games they just equal their, their own record from 1999 so the next away game we play if we win that's a 18 games that's a record if we don't even as long as we avoid a lose a loss that next away game, Arsenal. And boy, do we need to revenge that one in the last from Arsenal. And I guarantee you, we're going to the Emirates. We are going to rip them bum buckler. No lube. Straight. Dead, them dead. A war. Um, and then this next factor that we have to talk about, there's no way we can let it slip and not talk about it, is that at this point in time, Manchester United has got 21 points from losing positions. 21 points. That means that seven games that we've got, we got from losing positions. Just straight win. Loan 1-0. All right, cool. Boom. Down 2-0. All right, cool. 3-2. It's amazing the type of mentality that these men are gaining. And they just need to get over that hurdle. Today was one of those days that last year we would have never won. You know, the pressure was high. The arrivals played before us and we needed to win to get ahead of them and we did it today. The only thing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer needs to get out of his team now is to get past that semi-final hurdle. And if we get past Liverpool this weekend and go into the next one of the FA Cup, we have an opportunity again in another cup to push forward and get those experiences. Because, man, they mean to get the mentality. Stick a pin on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer there real quick. Every time Manchester United, since this man has been in the job, every time he goes through a rough patch, they started screaming, people started screaming, oh, he's going to lose his job, he's going to lose his job. No one seemed to have the time to talk about Lampard and what Lampard has been doing and how stupid Lampard has been managing his team and how horrible he is as a manager. You know why? Because the English press keeps sucking off Lampard, bro. Because he's English, because he's a legend at Chelsea, because he's an English legend, no one seems to want to criticize the job Lampard has been doing since he got into the job. Yes, he got a young team and he, he made them qualify for, for top four. But Ole Gunnar Solskjaer came third. And every other game, he was his job was on the line. And every time the media hyped up that his job was on the line, his team showed up and performed for him. And now they're top of the league. They're top of the league. So 21 is coming. Hashtag that I write it somewhere. 21, they pan the way. All right, so now let's focus on Paul Pogba. The game winner. The match winner. And honestly... Pogba got me all messed up. You understand? It's Pogba is like the ex where you love. And every time she keep calling you, you just keep going back. But you know say toxic, but you just, you just can't stop. You just keep going back. And every time you link her, you don't have so much fun. And then two minutes later, you just want... Mm. That's Pogba. That's the relationship I have with Pogba. Because Pogba come, plays for Manchester United. And he's awesome. He plays well. And all you want to do is just like, mm, that's my baller. But then two minutes later, you realize the man want to leave, bro. Man have him... Him agent that disrespect the club so it's kind of it's a love-hate relationship and as long as he putting on a manchester united shirt i'm going to back him a hundred percent if he plays bad i'll tell him if he plays well i'll tell him and today he was immense man after match and this is the, this is what his second game winner in two weeks bro him doing against west ham and him doing today pogba him doing against burley pogba is showing his qualities and i worry is he now pushing and showing his qualities just in time for him to be sold because he wants someone to come and buy him. I mean, Real Madrid is struggling. Even today, they lost. Juventus says they want him. The biggest thing for me is that I'm a Manchester United fan. I'm not a Paul Pogba fanboy. I'm Manchester United sexual. That's what I am. So, if Paul, if Cristiano Ronaldo can leave, Ruud Van Nistelrooy, 
Yam Stamp, David, Blood, Clark, Beckham, why Pagba can't leave? If Pagba was to go make him go on. On the other hand, I'll be the happiest man alive. Happiest man alive if Pagba sign a contract and stay at Manchester United. That shit is almost orgasmic. Pagba, if you sign a deal tomorrow, me I upload it on Pono because I'm pretty sure people will jack after that. I would. Shit. You, you, you would too, right? No? I would. I definitely would. Anyway, people, make sure you drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. This has been the fourth official. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe in these trying times. Wear a mask. Take care of yourself. Take care of others. Manners.